What's up everyone? I'm Jaren and I hope you guys are enjoying your Independence Day week slash weekend and today I am talking about the black phone. Now this is based on the novel written by Joe Hill, aka Stephen King's son, and he's had some adapted works that have gone on in the projects, including Horns, uh, Nosferatu, The New Creep Show, and I think Netflix adapted In the Tall Grass and the Lock and Key TV series. And yeah, I think that The Black Phone is the first big wide release blockbuster that we got for Joe Hill's work. Stepping into the screenwriter slash director's chair are C. Robert Cargill and Scott Derrickson. They are the duo pair that have done Doctor Strange, the first movie, and Sinister. And speaking of Sinister, we are also reunited with the two celebrities who are actually in this movie, who are James Ranson and Ethan Hawke. They are also joined by the talents of Mason Thames and Madeline McGraw as we follow the story of a 13-year-old boy who is abducted by a child killer named The Grabber, locked away in a soundproof basement and begins receiving phone calls from a disconnected landline from the killer's previous victims. This movie was provokingly emotional, deliciously creepy, and nail-bitingly suspenseful. First of all, Mason Thames and Madeline McGraw are Hollywood's future talents. I love the brother and sister relationship in this movie. It is so pure, it is so innocent, and at the same time, just so genuine. Uh, wherever the plot could possibly go stale, you are just so invested with the story, interweaving both of their obstacles. Because in the end of it, you're just really, really hoping that they'd reunite by the end of this whole thing. Second, Ethan Hawke as the Grabber is remarkably and unpredictably terrifying. He spends about 90% of screen time behind the mask, which makes his performance nightmarishly good. The movie, although, does not warrant a motivation for his character, which keeps him a little mysterious, but also really scary for an antagonist. Now, Tom Savini is the special effects meister when it comes to horror movies, and he's been in this industry for a very long time, so when I found out that he was behind the design of the Grabber's Mask, I was like, whoa, this is distinctively awesome and iconic, that you just have all these little attachments for the mask that really expresses the emotions that Ethan Hawke's performance really revels in and illuminates and it just really just enhances a lot of what the grabber is all about. Now I'm sorry if I'm constantly bringing this up but I don't mean to compare Joe Hill's novel to Sinister all the time but I gotta respect the fact that Derrickson really executed this film with such care that I love the 70s filter he added onto it. It added a lot of grain and thickness to it especially with uh, Gwen's nightmare sequences and it almost felt like I was seeing a mirrored version of the snuff films in Sinister. There's also the cast of the dead children, and if I'm going to be honest, in Sinister, I thought the kids were rather annoying because they were just there to pop up on screen and scare the shit out of you, and I was just like, eh, that's rather cheap. I hope they weren't going to do that in this movie, and even though there were some effectively scary moments with the kids, I just love their makeup effects and just the fact that we were dealing with, like... A variety of kids and how they were going back and forth on the interplay with Finn and although we don't get a lot of exposition or a lot of flashbacks that involve a lot of these kids I think that a lot of the things that they talk about some of the little details with the way that their makeup effects were affected um, really just adds a lot of depth to each character that Finn ends up asking for help now I did go in with little expectations because I did feel that maybe the trailer gave a little too much away and I just didn't want to be completely spoiled to the fact that maybe they showed a lot of scares in this movie so I wasn't expecting like something that was going to send me home just like looking over my shoulder completely scared out of my mind. I knew the movie was going to be suspenseful no doubt but what I didn't expect and what they don't show in the trailer is a lot of the drama that really drives a lot of our characters and we even get to see 
like especially kids and i didn't think they'd adapt this part of the material but we actually get to see kids get abused and they bully each other and it's sometimes brutal and a little hard to watch but it really adds a lot especially right before the abduction which happens a little after 30 minutes into the movie i mean these kids were going through some tough times some real world shit that i kind of teared up inside. I felt a lot of sympathy towards these characters that I was fully invested. It is not your typical horror movie. There are not jump scares around every corner. It builds a lot of tension. And when Derrickson finally executes that on screen, it is earned. It is effective. Like, maybe there are like two good jump scenes that even though I saw it coming or I was expecting it, I jumped out of my seat. I thought my heart stopped. Just my soul left my body. It scared the shit out of me. And that's what I'm talking about. I love when jump scares actually do that. It's nothing cheap. It's nothing like underwhelming. It is just the right kind of scare. Now, if I got to be brutally honest and what is keeping me from calling this one of the near perfect horror films of 2022 is that I wanted more Ethan Hawke. I wanted more of the grabber and I understand that what I said earlier about the movie keeping him like less on screen just to give him that little mystique the that kind of creepiness vibe of not knowing a lot of his motivations or you know to humanize him I mean yes he is behind the mask the entire time and he demands the screen and the audience's attention when he comes up and it sells. Uh, there's just not enough of him that I felt like the trailer showed maybe 90% of whatever I was to expect of this character. Um, I felt like a lot of grit, a lot of just scariness and being taken out of left field kind of surprise was missing. Uh, not that he had to get like graphic or anything. It's just that if I'm going to be honest, I think Kathy Bates from Misery beats him out. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. I'm pretty sure he had more pages and existence in the Black Phone book anyway. Um, but I'm just going to say that if you're going to cast Ethan Hawke as a villain, utilize him all the way through. All right, guys, that's all I got to say about that movie. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Jaren Ugbanawag. Look forward to more reviews, and I will see you guys at the movies. Take care.